Here is our curly language grammar so far. Um, we have numbers and symbols and arithmetic and we have function calls. I'm going to stop writing the grammar in this style though and write it in this other style. In this style we're talking about the representation of curly programs as S expressions which is close to the concrete syntax but it's not really what a user of the curly language thinks about. Uh, a user of the curly language just thinks about curly brace plus and curly brace times and so on. This particular way of writing grammar at the bottom is more recognizably Bacchus Nauer form, which is a standard way of writing language syntax. It says we're defining a grammar exp, and it can either be a number or a symbol, which we just have to agree what numbers and symbols are, uh, or it can be cur curly brace plus, and then an exp, and then another exp, close curly brace, and so on. So these two things have the same information, but this bottom form is in a more standard notation and more directed at users of the curly language. We can write the, uh, the syntax of curly this way. The same information is in our exp data type, um, just again even more closely tuned to what we care about, which is writing the interpreter. I'm going to now change the grammar of expressions. We're going to add uh, a new form to curly, uh, a local binding form with let. So the syntax of let is going to be curly brace let and then a curly brace in square bracket and this extra pair of square brackets is just to be consistent with plate syntax. Uh, and then we're going to have a symbol and then an expression and then another expression in the body of the let. So this let has three real parts, a name, another expression, and a body expression. For example, when I write let x be plus 1, 2 and plus x, x, the intent is that 1 plus 2 becomes 3 and x means 3 from now on. And so when I do plus x, x, that turns into plus 3, 3 or 6. Uh, let is in the expression grammar, which means it can show up inside of a plus or a times. So if I do plus let uh, x plus 1, 2 plus x, x, this thing we saw should evaluate to 6, so the whole plus expression should evaluate to 7. I can nest let wherever I want to. I can even list nest let twice inside of this plus expression. Notice that I have two lets, both of which bind the name x, but the meaning of this x is only supposed to extend to the end of this let, to the end of that let's body, so this is a completely different x. So this x stands for 3, why this x stands for the result of minus 4, 3, it stands for 1. So we end up getting 6 plus 2, that's how we end up with 8 in this case. I could just as well rename this x to y as long as I rename it consistently, and it would have the same result. So the name is intended to be local to that let form. What happens if I have nested lets like this? After all, a let has an expression in this body, so that could be another let. I might have something like let x be plus 1, 2, and then let x be minus 4, 3, and then use at x inside. So this x is inside both of these let bodies. Which x do I mean? The intent here is that x refers to the closest binding of x. Uh, that this x definition effectively hides this one from its body. So x here stands for 1, and that's why I add 1 plus 1 to get 2. If, on the other hand, I have a nested let where I have a y as the inner binding, then this x refers to the closest one, which is now just the only one, this x. So now x refers to 3, and 3 plus 3 is 6. What if I refer to x over here on the right-hand side of the inner let? The intent of the let form is that x, this x becomes available only in the body expression. And so this x is not referenced by this x. This x is in the body of the outer let expression, since the body starts here. So this x is meant to refer to that x. That's why this x stands for 3. We subtract 3 from 4 to get 1, add 1 and 1 to get 2. With this new let form in our grammar, we need to reflect it in our abstract syntax, that is, in our x data type. We will add a new let e form. In the case of a let, we don't need to remember the first curly brace or the word let, which is all the same, or all of these brackets. We have three things to, to keep track of. The symbol, which is the name of the variable being defined locally. The right-hand side of that, which is uh, the is going to give the value for that uh, local binding. And then we have the body expression. So that's why we have three parts here. One symbol and two expressions. This is always a symbol, not an expression, like a number. So that's why uh, we use symbol here instead of exp.